All right, Mark, do you want to share the slideshow? Okay. Well, welcome uh, all you Mark Epstein's out there uh, to our Lost Valley Trails public meeting. Uh, thanks for uh, spending some time with us this evening to talk about this project. Uh, I'm going to start with some introductions. Actually, when you move to the next slide, Mark, I think there's some uh, instructions to tell me what to do there. Yeah, okay. So we're going to quickly uh, do some introductions for folks who are uh, panelists at today's meeting. Uh, my name is Chris Wurzbicki. I'm the city's public works director. And uh, I'll next I'll introduce Mark. Okay, I'm Mark Epstein. I'm the real Mark Epstein, I think. Uh, although there is another one on the island, I, I do know that. But uh, anyhow, I am the engineering project manager in Public Works. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Dan? Hi, I'm Dan Hamlin. I'm with the Park District, um, Park Services Division Director. Barb? Hi, I'm Barb Trafton. I'm the Projects Director with the Bainbridge Island Parks Foundation. And Andy. Hi, Andy Marin. I'm a board member of the Parks Foundation. Thanks, everybody. So as you can see, uh, this project is a bit of a joint venture. Uh, the city is leading this project and is leading the meeting today. But uh, our partners um, the parks, with the Parks District and the Parks Foundation are uh, helping us do some project planning and eventually some implementation for this project. And uh, we're really happy to have them uh, in partnership with us on this and a number of other projects as well. Um, so I'm really glad they're here and they're also gonna have a chance to uh, talk to you a little bit about uh, how their organizations and their work overlap with this project. So uh, if you're not familiar with Zoom, um, I'll just briefly tell you that uh, the way for you to participate tonight will primarily be at the end of the meeting. Uh, we're going to talk to you about the project and some about some of the context. We're going to take a couple of polls and we're also uh, so we'll have some time for questions and answer and some comments at, in the probably in the second half of this meeting. And the way that you'll do that is you'll go down to the bottom of your screen and raise your hand and uh, we will call on you. And if you're named Mark Epstein in the attendees list, hopefully you'll give us your uh, your actual name so that we can uh, document who's saying what, and uh, that'll help us address the questions better. So, all right, and so before we continue the rest of the meeting, uh, we're also gonna do a uh, land acknowledgement real quick here. Um, our land acknowledgement statement uh, starts, uh, we would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is within the Aboriginal territory of the Squamish, uh, the people of the clear salt water. Expert fishermen, canoe builders, and basket weavers, the Suquamish live in harmony with the lands and waterways along Washington's central Salish Sea, as they have for thousands of years. Here, the Suquamish live and protect the land and waters of their ancestors for future generations, as promised by the Point Elliott Treaty of 1855. And a quote from Chief Seattle, every part of this soil is sacred in the estimation of my people. Every hillside, every valley, every plain and grove has been hallowed by some sad or happy event in days long vanished. Okay, uh, to kick off the meeting, we're gonna do a little bit of participation from folks. Uh, we're gonna take a, a couple of polls. Alan is our uh, tech person. Alan, if you could bring the first poll up for people to uh, chime in on. Okay, first poll question is about uh, just trying to get a sense of where folks are from on the island. Uh, so please tell us where you're Zooming from today. Uh, do the best you can with the areas that are listed. We couldn't list every area of the island, so the closest uh, that you can get. And we'll give uh, folks just a few seconds to fill that out. All right, Alan, you wanna, how are folks doing? We get some good results. I can't see uh, how many people are participating. Um, yeah, we've got pretty good participation here. Um, we have about 39%. Right. Interesting. A lot of folks from Winslow Allen Center. 
North Island as well. People from all over the island uh, interested in this project. And that's, I, I think, appropriate. It is um, not just uh, recreational, but also, as you're going to learn today, uh, also about transportation, too. All right, you want to uh, release the next poll in, uh, Alan? Next poll is uh, generally what interests you most about the law about Lost Valley. Uh, is it uh, shortcuts, bicycling, viewing nature, walking, preserving habitat? We'll give folks a couple of minutes to, or a couple of seconds to respond. To All right, Alan, what do you think? Yeah, that's probably about it. Okay. Walking route seems to be in the lead with uh, preserving habitat close behind, interesting. Okay, well, good. It's good to get a little bit of context and that's exactly how we're gonna follow up that uh, conversation. Um, I believe Barb Trafton from the Parks Foundation is going to tell us a little bit about how this project fits in with some of the larger trail planning in this uh, particular part of the island and uh, a little bit of history here too. And then we'll um, dive into a little bit more details. Barb, you wanna take it away? Absolutely, yeah. So for those of you who weren't here in the intro, I am Barb Trafton and I am the projects director for the Bainbridge Island Parks Foundation. So the Parks Foundation, we're aiming to expand our island's network of public trails. And we work with the city and the park district to help acquire easements for trails and also to build new trails. Since 2015, the Parks Foundation has been working to support trails in the city's Lost Valley properties. Um, these trails will be the heart of a long sought public route between Winslow and Gasm Lake Preserve. You can see this route and other public trails on the map before you. In 2019, the Parks Foundation purchased the final two easements that complete a route that was planned 15 years earlier when the uh, several of the Lost Valley properties and trail easements were purchased by the city. Um, as recommended by the city's Open Space Commission. This area called Lost Valley lies northwest of the head of the bay between Eagle Harbor Drive and Fletcher Bay Road. Lost Valley is a beautifully forested area, the home of some of the island's largest hemlocks with a deep ravine, wetland and stream. You'll hear more about the history of this area in just a few minutes. Um, we believe that public trails enhance our, public, our Bainbridge Island community. They promote positive physical and mental health for Islanders, and they bring other social and economic benefits. So we at the Parks Foundation applaud the 2021 interlocal agreement between the city of Bainbridge and the Bainbridge Island Metro Park and Rec District. Not so long ago, the city focused only on transportational trails and the park district focused on recreational trails. And trails, like so many things in life, lie on a spectrum. And in fact, most trails are appreciated for serving a range of use from recreation to transportation. So thanks to our friends at the city and the park district, including those leading this meeting um, for embracing this understanding. The Lost Valley Trails will be the heart, as I said, of a connected trail route from Winslow to Gasm Preserve. At this time, all easements are in place adjoining public lands. And we encourage the city to work with the park district to construct and open this public non-motorized trail route with ongoing support from the Bainbridge Island Parks Foundation. And we are funded through donations and grants. And we invite you to participate in the realization of a trail. I'm gonna now pass the baton on to Andy Marin. He's president of the Parks Foundation, former city council person and mayor, and member of the Bainbridge Open Space Commission. And Andy will tell you about the history of the Lost Valley properties. Okay, uh, what we all dub Lost Valley, that's not a term of art. It's a made up words from the city's open space commission from almost 20 years ago. Uh, it includes this red corridor. It actually includes some trail easements, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, the, the, the history of this is a little bit important. What you see all there is an accumulation of properties purchased at various times by the city. And I know some of the history, I don't know all of the history, but uh, recognize it's not one thing that happened. It uh, happened over many, many years. 
I can tell you the specifically what I was involved with when uh, the, the city, for those of you who haven't been around for 20 years, the Bainbridge citizens voted an $8 million bond issue in 2001 for the purchase of open space uh, with a restriction. And that is the property purchased by the city would could only be used for passive purposes. Uh, in other words, not athletic fields. Uh, so the, the, the process was a seven member commission was created to look around the island and figure out what properties to purchase. Uh, when doing that, uh, we, we were, we, and I served in that commission for the years, and in, in doing that, we were very cognizant of, of trying to uh, do two things while we were doing that. One is scatter the properties around the island and also focus, make sure that we had some passive areas close to Winslow because the, wind, the comprehensive, city's comprehensive plan has increased development planned for Winslow. So in looking around for properties to purchase uh, and acquire for that purpose, we saw that the city already owned a lot of property that you see here. And specifically the properties right to, along the creek that you see there, Cooper Creek, is owned by the city's water utility. The wells, the city of Wins the town of Winslow, I guess, the city of Winslow's first wells were, uh, were from that area and are still there and operating today. Uh, and the city had acquired property along there for the wells and also to protect that stream area, therefore protecting the wells. So when looking at that, additionally, the property to the north, and I don't have a cursor here, so um, well, I'm doing this. Is, is that cursor visible? No, okay. Well, the northeast quadrant up there is property that was uh, originally up in that area, that was originally uh, uh, used by the city, I believe by the county early on, and then by the city as a public works facility they used for decant and spoils. Um, and so to the point when the Open Space Commission began to look, we thought, my gosh, we can, if we use this property and use some of the money to add to it and create a really cool hidden passive park for trails and also use it to uh, as a way to continue what Barb talked about before, the long talked about and cobble together Winslow to Gasm trails. This would be the obvious way that the Winslow to Gasm trail would, uh, would proceed would be through Lost Valley. So, as a result, the, the uh, Open Space Commission acquired three pieces of property on the very west, northwest part of it, part of it uh, to essentially get more protection from the stream and also acquired uh, easements that don't show on here, but they lead from the, the red lines over to Fletcher Bay Road. So the acquisition was of both things, the uh, specific land and also easements. While doing that, we couldn't, we couldn't get easements all the way through. There was a, a gap. And so the idea of having a trail go through simply couldn't be done because there was a gap in the easement. That, and so life went on and Everybody did stuff and nothing got developed here with despite lots and lots of talk by many people and urging some of us old open space commissioners kept saying to the city, when are you going to ever build the trail through there? Well, the Parks Foundation solved that by recently buying easements to create the linkage, which now means finally the trail can actually be built all the way through. So that's probably enough history. Happy to do more if you'd like, but I know we have other things to talk about. Great, thanks so much, Andy. Um, so we'll go through and um, give you the overview and get into, into a few specifics. And I wanna just start by saying, as Chris pointed out, that this really has been a collaborative process with the Parks Department and the Parks Foundation and uh, getting those easements and allowing this, this to go through. So uh, time seems to be right. So if you can stick it out to uh, six o'clock and you wanna get the bottom line, um, this is the proposed trails through 
the Lost Valley, at least the city part of the Lost Valley. And I'll go through this in, in a little bit more detail, but uh, I guess the big points are there's, there'd be one bigger or wider trail that would wind through what we're calling our transcreational trail. It's a combination of transportation and recreational trails. And then there would also be a series of other, uh, what are more park district traditional recreational trails that would connect neighborhoods and potentially uh, have other ones that would allow for more viewing, uh, viewing the beautiful spot that is Lost Valley. So let's um, go through a few, few details. Um, the, the trails could be accessed by, by five different points. And uh, I'll just go through in a little bit of detail. Camilla Lane is a private road that is at the intersection of Finch and Sportsman's Club. Um, so it's a very quiet, uh, very low traveled uh, road. There is an easement that goes on the south side of Camilla Lane that could get you to the city properties. It would be a trail that would wind down um, to a parking area at this location. So that would be another uh, destination. And that parking area would be accessed through the, uh, the right of way that is Eagle, it's called Eagle Harbor Road. It comes off of Eagle Harbor Drive and Wyatt Way. So at the curve of Wyatt Way around the head of the bay, uh, you'd head north and get to a parking area. So there'd be vehicular access there. Um, there's no, be another pedestrian access through the recreational trails um, off of, um, what's the what's the name of the development there? Help me out. Ridge, 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 Lane. Ridge Lane. Ridge Lane, okay, thanks. And then from the easements that the Park Foundation have helped acquire from Fletcher Bay Road into the, the western corner of, of uh, the Lost Valley. So, uh, Mark? Yep. Can you, can you hear me, Mark? I can. While you're on this map, why don't you show people with a cursor where the well, well sites are? Sure, good point. So the city's wellheads are right here, existing wellheads. And then this park proposed parking area is already a fairly flat and uh, fairly a firm surface. Might even be have asphalt on that surface, I believe. So, yeah, thanks, Andy. So the two types of trails, I just want to touch on this briefly, the transcreational trails, we're calling it, would be that main path that I just showed you. They'd be eight feet wide, uh, compacted gravel surface to begin with, uh, and those would have an 8% maximum slope. And in the future, we were thinking about uh, adding this on top. The gravel surface would be a base for this type of surfacing. This is something we had um, shown to the Parks Board and City Council back in January of last year. And we we're getting pretty positive feedback on this. It's a bonded wood fiber product. Uh, it is completely permeable. So that was uh, the big benefit of, of using this product, a little more natural looking than asphalt and there are other choices that are permeable that do look more like asphalt. Um, I guess the other consideration is a pretty expensive uh, material. It's a proprietary product and it, it's about roughly on the same cost magnitude as concrete, but much better than concrete surface. And the recreational trails and uh, Dan could pit, um, pitch in more about this but they would be more of the trails that you're used to seeing in, in parklands. They'd be anywhere from two to six feet in width, depending on where they're going. Uh, more of a, a native soil surface. Um, those can be steeper than the 8% we're looking for for a transcreational trail. And they'd, they'd be used, as I said before, to connect to adjacent neighborhoods and, and viewpoints. Yeah, and where appropriate, we can cross through the wetlands to get uh, more um, less impact trails built on the north side of the wetland. Okay, so just I'll step you through the transcreational trail alignment here fairly briefly, because uh, we do want to get on to this discussion. So I broke it up into four segments. Um, this is the Carmela segment we talked about uh, previously. It's a, there's a 15 foot wide easement on the south side of Carmela, and that would get you to the top. 
the next segment uh, would we'll, we'll be coming down this hill from Camilla to the parking area. There is an existing trail now that sort of follows some power lines right along the western boundary along here. Um, fairly steep one, so we would carve a new trail in that would be a little more gentle, gentler grade. And then the a long segment from the parking lot area down to the western boundary. And we selected the south side of Cooper Creek for this alignment for a couple of reasons. One, there is a little more room that is out of the, the creek area, the, the critical area. And second, there's already some existing trails in there so that we could potentially use um, uh, some of those to avoid additional impacts. And then the last segment is actually outside the city property along the existing easements to get you from Lost Valley to Fletcher Bay Road. And then the other type of trail here, it's just um, shown here. These are some existing trails uh, that are in Lost Valley. Now we could use those and we could potentially build um, some, some more. So we're looking for your feedback on those as well. And here's the environmental considerations because uh, habitat protection is uh, well, one of the big reasons for acquiring Lost Valley. So we would use those existing trails wherever we could to avoid more environmental impacts, uh, avoid wetlands wherever we can. So we're gonna try to stay up off the valley floor um, using boardwalks to span these more sensitive areas and steeper slopes. So we can keep the trail under 8% and provide more mitigation restoration within the valley. And really that's the end of our presentation. Um, so we'd like to, we have a good amount of time for your uh, questions and comments. I see many of you have renamed yourself, thank you. And if you want to raise your hand, I'll, I'll uh, call on you and, and bring you into the speaking role in the order that they appear on my screen. And we're happy to answer your questions and uh, take your comments. Um, first one on the list is Kathleen Keegan. Hi, uh, Kat, this is Kathy Keegan. I actually live on Carmela Lane, and I just think this is awesome. I'm, I'm super excited about it. Um, I, I did have a question for you, though, because I do often walk um, from Carmela down to the parking lot area that you that you called out. Um, I used to go out to Wyatt from there, but the owner at the um, bottom of the road informed me that that the road is private and that I can't actually walk on it. So I'm just wondering, um, was that issue solved? Um, or is it, you know, cars can cars can go down Eagle Harbor Road, I think you called it in park, but but um, no one's allowed to walk on it. So just a little clarification there. Uh, yes, the, so the research we've done and uh, been verified through uh, past paperwork in our right of way manager is that that road is, uh, the city does have a right of access to that. So uh, that is, that road does provide public access and we intend to use it as part of the project. Perfect. I guess I can walk on it now then. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Hey, Mark, could you pull up a map so we can refer while we're going? Yeah, that's, thanks. Thanks, Andy, appreciate that. I'll go back to uh, the overall one. How about that? But folks should know that there is no parking place right there right now. Okay, I will, um, the next person on my list uh, is Mark Epstein. So I uh, hopefully you'll tell us your name if you haven't changed your name. And I'll ask you to unmute so you know that you've been called on. Hi, um, I didn't have the option to change. I think I clicked on the previous link that had been posted. Um, my name is Zach Zaroff. Um, my dad, Dan Brewer actually owns that property that Eagle Harbor bisects. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, at first, I'd like to say that I 
use so many of the trails on the island and I, I love having them all. Um, I think they're really great. I, I do feel that this, the road that's listed there is a bit of a misnomer. Um, it, it looks like it's sort of equal to Wyatt or Eagle Harbor, but it's really a one lane gravel road that is used as a driveway for uh, my dad, as well as the property up like north of him. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then occasionally city vehicles will use it to access the watershed. Um, so I have a hard time picturing a lot of traffic uh, getting to the parking area being feasible on that road. And it does feel a little bit invasive since the road bisects that property. So I'm wondering in terms of access and parking, are there options to have parking at Wyatt and Eagle Harbor um, or at the other potential like trailhead locations that wouldn't be as intrusive to the property? So we didn't see another viable area for even a small parking area. And we wouldn't anticipate and actually getting some feedback on the number of cars um, people think is about right for, for, this, for this site would be welcomed. Um, there are, you know, and we can talk to you sort of after the meeting too about maybe some options about where the road is or how that road gets gets improved. Um, so I think, you know, that's probably the best I can do at this point. Is that okay? Yep, All right. that's great. Okay, thank you. Uh, I do have another person with my name up here. I'm going to um, bring you in and ask you to unmute so you know that you are next. Oh, I think it went back to me. Oh, okay, sorry. That's the problem. That's, okay. That's right when you're, we're all named the same. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna lower. Okay, next is uh, Lisa Macchio. Thank you for changing your name, Lisa. Oh, that's okay. I, I logged in as myself. So oh, I'll lower my hand. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, so thanks, Mark, for having us all. I've got a couple of concerns. So with respect to what Zach mentioned about parking, uh, I took a walk through this whole valley on Sunday, and we looked at that area, and uh, some of us thought, hey, that would be a great area for like a pump track trail or for gear grinders to set up some mountain biking stuff because it's, you know, it's pretty flat. So with respect to parking, you know, I personally think people should walk to these trails. So if we could do without parking, I'm all for getting rid of the parking. Uh, so that was one because I wanted to follow on to what Zach was saying about parking and do we really need to have parking. I also was on the Open Space Commission in 2004 when we purchased Lost Valley. So it's nice to know that it's still there and it's pristine conditions. And I'm concerned with the width of a trail and the placement of a trail and the environment. And you did speak to some environmental issues, but uh, given I know how things work in the city, I think having someone like the land trust come in and do a ecological assessment in Lost Valley, because I think oftentimes trails are, even though they're, they, they are thought to be placed in places that deal with the physical features of the land, there's also important features with regard to habitat that I think need to be front and center. Uh, as I think about the trajectory of where the island is going with development, these pieces that are untouched are rare and should be protected. And so I would like to see the land trust as a partner with the park district and the city in any planning forward of a trail uh, of any sort in this area. And I, I think it's frankly surprising to me that they weren't brought in in the beginning and I know as a person who, you know, how we traditionally do business is who's going to get the trail, who's going to manage the trail, whose property is it? But with respect to who really brings forward the ecological protection on the island, it's typically the land trust. So I'd like to see a subgroup put together as this thing moves forward so that the land trust is a partner in the development. 
So with regard to six to eight foot wide trails, I'm totally against something that wide in Lost Valley. Again, when open space purchased these properties, e-bikes didn't exist in 2004. And I'm not so sure this is the place for uh, e-bikes to be going at 20 miles an hour on an eight foot path. So um, I'm, I'm just, I'm very concerned about placement of the trail, width of the trail, material of the trail, sensitivity of the environmental habitat of all aspects of the ecology. And I just don't think you've, you've all provided all of that information for the public to consider. So I think it's a little premature for you guys to be coming out with all these different specifications at this time. And I realize it's just a plan, uh, but it seems pretty fully baked. Uh, and I'm wondering really how much opportunity there is to slow this down and involve the land trust in the design and et cetera. So that's what I offer as my public comment. Thanks, Lisa. Um, yes, this is just a concept plan. This is our first, uh, first um, proposal. So there's plenty of opportunity for public input and changes. So I appreciate your comments. The, we have quite a few people with hands raised. So the next person is also Mark Epstein. I'm going to allow you to talk and ask you to unmute and please introduce yourself because I know you're not me. Hello, um, Eric and Barbara Weissman. Okay, thank you, go ahead. Um, so I have two questions and I, um, my first one uh, I think has just been touched on by uh, Lisa's comment. Uh, and that question was, what is the purpose of the transcreational trail? Um, I have to say, if it's uh, to allow motorized bikes, uh, <laughs> uh, we'd rather not see that. Um, uh, I just don't think uh, that um, the, the difference in speed uh, between walkers and uh, motorized bike uh, riders uh, is uh, properly on uh, on trails. Um, and uh, I was just wondering, and this I suppose goes to your first comment, uh, somebody said that they were told they couldn't go on that road because it was private property. Is the city going to inform the landowner that it is that uh, the city has easement there? Okay, uh, I heard two questions there. And the, the purpose of the wider trails is to allow uh, other wheels uh, through there. It may, it may or may not be permitted. It's more of a policy question to have electric bikes go through, um, but there's wheelchairs, there's people with uh, strollers that could potentially use that and have that access all the way across the property. So that's that's the reason for having the transcreational standard. Um, and then the road, yes, we're gonna have discussions with the, the brewers that are own, owns the property um, that the road currently bisects through. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Okay. And th thank you for putting your hand down too, since I don't have different names. Uh, so the next person also is my name. I'm going to allow you to talk and ask you to unmute. Hello. Um, hello. I have uh, I'm Erica Biggs, and I'm here also with my father, Jerry Elfendahl. And we have a, a great relationship with this property, having lived in the same house that I think Dan Brewer that you're living in. Um, so we're very familiar with that road from my childhood. Um, and the main comment that I wanted to make was, I think that was touched on already that the, the parking in that location really seems inappropriate to me. I think that our trails on the island do need to have parking because I don't think that they should only be for the people that live immediately adjacent to the trails. I often use the parking up at uh, the Grand Forest, for example, but I do think that having cars coming in and out of that very treacherous corner um, is not a great idea. 
And I do think there's a couple of other partnerships that could be explored, perhaps carving a wider slot, don't need too many spots, uh, but maybe partnering with the PSE land that is at the southwest corner of Carmela and Finch, or encouraging people to utilize or partnering with Bethany Lutheran Church. Uh, that's not very far from this trailhead. Um, and while I'm a bike commuter myself, this wouldn't be on my path. Um, I like the bike, the trails being uh, multi-use, but I do think that an eight foot wide trail is, is pretty wide and maybe not necessary for a very uh, intimate experience for nature viewing. And now I might turn it over to uh, the other commenter, Jerry. You have to come closer here. Sorry. <laughs> can you hear me? Can you hear okay? Yes, we can. Can okay. you hear me okay? Yes, please go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I'm Jerry Elfendahl, longtime historian, and uh, oh, I think Greg Gein and I have formed a group called Friends of Geology. I've got lots of things. So the history there, Andy, goes back way more than 20 years. Uh, we can take it back uh, over 130 years that I know of, uh, and I'd like to share that with you. I'd like to volunteer. I used to be on the trails committee years ago when they first started. I'd be willing to help out and volunteer in any way and share what I know about the property. And there's a lot. One of the things I think is worth doing is, uh, has there been any kind of geological assessment? There's some really unique features geologically that uh, ought to be considered there. One is, of course, slope stability because that's a, that valley walls are, are steep and there has steep and there have been some slides in there. One of the more interesting things I wrote about in the streams of Bainbridge Island, which is an environmental history of the island told through water. Uh, there is a natural spring in that valley. We set aside 10 acres for the city in there. So as try to preserve that water site. Uh, Wayne Daly and the F fisheries committees in the past have all uh, planted coho and things in there. I, I one time with a friend of mine in, uh, from college when he came back from Japan, we uh, tried to grow uh, uh, shiitake mushrooms in there unsuccessfully, but that was more because of a drought than anything else. Uh, the other thing that's really unique is uh, if you think about Eagle Harbor for a minute, it's a it's a rare, rare thing, and it runs east and west across the island in an in a island that had a north-south glaciation. Uh, that's very rare to have an east-west protective harbor. Uh, Blakely is much the same way. Uh, when Robinson and Noble uh, did their survey uh, on the county land and the city land for a well for Winslow. Uh, I'll never forget the day that when their uh, geologists came out just screaming and hollering and he'd found a vial. He had a vial of black sand he was showing out the window. And I didn't know what did he got. He had oil, gold, what, what did he have? He said, no, he said, this is the only place on the west side of Puget Sound where this has been found. And what he found was a sand that could only have come from Mount Rainier and had only been come prior to that time from uh, the Duwamish River area. And uh, we followed the other uh, Robinson and Noble uh, PUD uh, well explorations over at Flesher Bay. I've always supposed and, and geologists have uh, suggested that uh, there was once in pre times uh, the sound was like the Willamette Valley and there was a there was a river that went from the southeast to the northwest. At any rate, I'm going to shut myself off. You know how to get me uh, and uh, we'll move on. But I'm really excited about this. This has been a long time in vision. However, I would suggest where is the rest of the trail going to go to Gasm Lake? You can't conceive of that taking that first step without having a plan for the whole thing. Take care. Love you all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't know, Barbara, if you want to address that last question, but I will also address the question about the um, environmental assessments and none of them have been done yet. So this is really just premature and we're looking for input um, or this concept is not premature, but the concept is out there for input. And um, yeah, we'll we'll have to do the geological assessments and the wetland assessments and, and whatever all the other um, studies that we'll need to do before. Um, Barb, do you want to talk about how Lost Valley fits in? Happy to do so. Yeah, Jerry, it's true. We did need the whole thing. And in fact, we have it all 
in alignment, though it's not completely ready to go and open yet. There is an existing trail that goes 0.1 miles from where the easement trail will come out from Lost Valley, 0.1 miles down um, a very busy Fletcher Bay Road that will need to have some uh, roadside amenity to make it safer for walking on. But then there's an existing trail that we call the Kojima Trail, though the park district will eventually be naming it. I don't think they formally have yet. And it goes up across three generous property owners' property and joins up to Kojima Road, which is a small dirt road. You go to the end of Kojima Road and there will be, there's another easement across another generous property owner and there will be a trail across the city parcel around. If you look over here, you can see um, the city parcel is a little paler than the Gasm Lake parcel and the, in the middle of it or at the north end of it is a, a circle that is Bainbridge Disposal. That back side of the property, the west side is beautiful and um, this trail will go adjacent to, but not into Gasm Lake Preserve because no new trails are allowed in, in that area of Gasm. Um, there's a, a conservation easement and then it will go right in to meet the, um, the Emerald Heights Trail, no, Opal Ridge Trail, excuse me, Opal Ridge Trail. Um, and uh, Park District is currently working on permitting that trail. So hopefully, I don't know, Dan, what do you think next summer? Yeah, that's the plan. We have the site plan ready to go. Um, and uh, that trail is the culmination of uh, a lot of collaboration between the city and the park district uh, with the hard work of the foundation securing all of these easements. So we do have a lot of people with hands up. I wanna to try to get as many to as many people as we can by six. So if, uh, if you can keep your comments fairly short, I appreciate that. And let's just get, allow everybody a chance to speak. Uh, the next is Kathleen Keegan. Oh, you got my comment already. Oh, I already got it. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'll let me just take your hand down. Uh, Stephen Shapiro. Uh, Stephen, you are still muted. How about or, now? Yep, okay. higher good. Um, I actually live up in the Lost Valley. I border on the, my wife and I border on the north side of it. And our comment basically is if you look at this map, um, the, uh, actually the one you just had up is better. Uh, transportation corridor from the south end goes up Fletcher Bay Road and then down high school to get to town. And uh, with regard to the type of trail, while the intent of um, accommodating as many users as possible on say a transcreational recreational trail is in theory a good idea. I think you should be very wary of all should be wary of particularly in the age of e-bikes. You're gonna create an e-bike super highway of people uh, wanting to cut off two or three miles of transportation to town. And I think if the intent is to maintain, uh, you know, positive habitat area, that uh, probably a, a, a lower profile trail might be more appropriate. I'm just kind of curious how ultimately, and so I'll, I'll end it with a question, how ultimately is that uh, decision going to be made? What are the criteria? I realize that at this point, they're just proposals, but how will the ultimate decision be made? Thanks. Um, I don't know, Chris, you want to take a shot at that question or should we just wait? Uh, well, we've, as Mark said, we've envisioned the project happening in phases. Um, so we're not necessarily planning to build out the transportational trail with the full surfacing and everything at the, in, as part of the initial step. Uh, so I think we'll, we'll have, uh, as has also been said, we'll have a lot more opportunity for input and public comment on this and, and through the permitting process. Uh, and we'll probably uh, approach it incrementally and see uh, how folks are feeling about, um, you know, expanding the trail to, to different use types and for different surfacing and so forth and and take the the, the planning of it in it kind of slow great so the next person also has uh, is also mark epstein i'm gonna allow you to to uh, talk and ask you to unmute please Hi. tell us your name can you hear me yes okay this is amanda nathan and i tried to change my name but apparently <laughs> it did not work thank you um, all right there we go 
So I, I just I share some of the comments have already really been said, but I, I enjoy running on this trail. I use it as a trail that I we, my husband and I cut across to Gasm Lake from Winslow. And I have a really hard time envisioning an eight foot wide trail through at least where I where the current trail is located. It's just so uh, fairly steep and there's a lot of vegetation close to the trail. So it's hard for me to imagine that. And I, I would be really curious to hear about the target. Um, target audience for this trail as that conversation develops. And uh, I, I would love to see an improved trail. I'm, I'm pretty excited about this, but um, have some serious concerns as others have expressed about the width uh, of the trail and the proposal for like higher speed bikes being able to use this trail. And I think that would be a little bit hazardous given the um, sight lines, at least of the current trail. So. Anyway, I'll keep an eye on it. And thank you very much for your hard work so far. Great, thanks, thanks for your comment. Uh, next is Mike Sirachi. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, I, I'll keep my comment short and just ask the question of how many trees are gonna be cut down in this whole process? And I don't need an answer now, but there doesn't seem to be any focus on that. That's because we don't we don't have an answer yet. Uh, this is just a conceptual plan. But yep, the, once once we know that that information would be conveyed. Thank you, Mike. Uh, next is Marsha Cutting. Hi, um, I would like to speak very strongly in favor of the six to eight foot trail, and that is in part because I use a power wheelchair. And um, it's kind of wide, unfortunately. And I'm realizing that if I meet somebody else who's in a power wheelchair or a somebody, a parent with a double stroller, I can't just step off the trail. That is not an option. And um, the reason I think this is particularly important is that we have a limited, actually, we only have one other paved trail um, that's kind of out in nature. And that's Fort Ward. I don't, I mean, Battle Point Park is very nice, but it certainly, it doesn't get you out in nature in the way that this trail would. And so I think it's critically important that all users have access to it. I also would reinforce the idea of having parking somewhere, possibly if um, Beth, Bethany Lutheran wanted to cooperate that because there is only one other sort of nature trail that people in chairs can use, um, I think it's very important to make this trail as accessible as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia. Uh, next is uh, also one with my name, but I'll ask you to unmute and please tell us your name. Okay, looks like that's me. Um, I'm Gina King. Um, I work for the Land Trust. Um, so I'll try to keep this really short, but yeah, really appreciate um, you know some of these comments that it would be great for the land trust to be involved in in the discussions here. I think everybody um, in the planning and um, knows that we have great resources mapping conservation values on the island, and this is a great concentrated area for forest cores and wetlands and stream and just a lot of really great um, habitat values. So we you know we look very closely at, at how the habitat networks. Are, are working as well as those transportation networks. So um, we definitely, you know, want, want to talk more about, you know, why the, the eight foot width in particular, as, as other folks are saying, seems a little in, incompatible. Um, but um, I understand folks concerned like Marsha about, um, you know, why, why we might need something with those specifications. Um, but yeah, we'd love to be part of that conversation and, um, and, and some of the specifics and would like to know, I guess, more about, um, again, how those decisions will be made, like how, how the input will be incorporated to um, come up with that incremental, the first design of these trails. If, if we're looking at incremental, if we could start, you know, maybe at six or a little under, you know, and then maybe move up to something larger, if, if that makes sense in the future. Okay. Thank you for your comment, Gina. Um, next also, uh, my name, so please uh, unmute and tell us your name. Uh, 
Hi there. Um, my name is Kate March. And sorry, I didn't figure out how to change my name. I tried, but I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that I love this plan. I think it's very smart um, to have the wider width trail and the impervious surface. I know that it will be interim, but um, having gravel first and then the other surface later on. But I'm a parent. I have, I grew up on the island and I'm lucky enough to be able to raise my kids here. My kids are young and I take them in a double stroller everywhere, a double bob. And for all the same reasons that we just heard in a, from a previous comment, it's really hard to be able to get little kids on wheels out onto trails on this island. Um, so my kids are old enough now they can walk and kind of bike themselves around a little bit more, but it was so frustrating for me when I had younger kids not to have access to a lot of the nature that I now get to enjoy every day with my dog. Um, and I just really can't echo it enough that I think it's so great that you're thinking about all users when you're planning this trail, especially at such an important cross island section. You know, this island has so many high quality trails already, and it's really great, but I would be really happy to see something for, um, for the rest of the population that everybody can use. So thanks again for the planning and the thoughtfulness to all users. Thank you, Kate. Uh, next up is Susan Loftus. Hi, I also wanted to echo um, how sensitive I think this current design is. Um, and it, I think it is really important to be able to have more users be able to use it. Um, the six to eight foot um, width is, I think that it's really, um, a con uh, it's not really an accurate fear that we're gonna have these, it's gonna become a bike highway through there because um, my having studied different bike types there's a group of the fast cyclists who are really going to prefer the fast, more straight route through Buckland Hill. And it's going to be the slower, you know, the kids, the women, the slower families who it's a different type of cycling. They're not, their goal isn't to get to their destination as fast as possible. It's really um, a, a much different type of cycling than we're used to on the island. And you know the other piece is that having that eight foot cycle, eight foot path, really allows to have less conflict between users. So it becomes less of a, um, you know, a, an argument between is it pedestrian or is it cyclists or you know it just allows everybody to be able to get along well. Um, and I think it is also a really good point that we just don't have. Um, almost any type of multi-use paths other than the first leg one mile of the STO. And it's just not balanced. Um, so that's, that's my, my main point. I think it's very sensitive. I think using, having the goal of having um, uh, the, in, in, the impervious surface so that water can go through, I think is, is really sensitive and, um, and that's it. Just kudos to the design, and I think it's pretty crucial. Thanks. Thanks, Susan. Uh, next up are the Grinters. Oh, hi. Um, thank you, Mark. Yeah, and I, I just got to say, you know, I've been involved in the Lost Valley planning for a long time, and it's in as well as many other collaborate or, or uh, issues, and it's just really uh, very nice to see the park district, the city this collaboration that's pulling together here because that's really what this community is going to support. Um, and uh, a couple of quick questions that just I think are important is, is can people current exist access the existing trail now because down by the wellhead area there are a number of signs saying you know you're not allowed it's you know you'll be prosecuted etc so i think it's really important as we move forward to allow people to access uh, the the route and and kind of see it visualize it um it is a stunning piece of land um uh, i wanted to give you just a, everybody a little bit of background from the city's non-motorized experience with this i was on that committee for about nine years um, and I chaired it uh, through a comprehensive plan uh, update where we discussed Lost Valley in quite a bit of detail. And it's been, it's been studied a lot by the non-motorized. And 
uh, we made the recommendation that the city uh, the, the, the reserve the right to make this a transportation route at some point in the future. And the reason we were focusing on this was because the, par the park district was, we were looking at, the city was looking at transferring it to the park district and they had a different set of standards and a different set of goals. And, and uh, while I, I believe it's pretty safe to say we all saw it just as incrementally starting with a smaller standard and building up to a larger standard as the use would dictate. And, and uh, so I think that's just some context there that, it, it, that, it, that uh, people should be aware of. And I, I, I share some concerns about the width, um, um, but one way you can manage, what I'm more concerned about is speed and the nature of the experience of users in this area. And uh, through the trails that I've helped the city and the park district design and build, some of which are big popular ones, Blakely Harbor to Fort Ward, the Close Property Trail and, and others, um, we learn a lot about trail design. And if you have a trail that meanders and follows the land and has curves uh, and just intuitively is a slower speed uh, without people even knowing it, like trail calming instead of traffic calming, I think that could really go a long way towards mitigating the concerns about user conflict. Um, and I, that's, I, I, that's the yeah. biggest, that's the biggest point I was, I was kind of hoping to make. So, okay. um, look forward to seeing that design. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt you, but I'm trying to get, we have three more people to go and trying to get them before, uh, we have to finish though. So thank you for that. Hey, Mark, uh, this is Alan from tech support real quick. Um, yeah. we, so Roz has another meeting at six that she has to start and we have to end this meeting for that meeting to be able to start. So I just, maybe if we don't okay. make it for everyone, maybe they can just um, send it in writing or something. Okay, that's that's a good point. Okay, so if I don't get to you, I apologize, um, but we do have to, we have a hard stop. Uh, next is also somebody that has uh, my login. Please uh, state your name. Um, this is Zach again, but I'm happy to pass it to other folks who haven't talked yet. Great, thanks, Zach. Um, and last one is also someone with my name. Uh, please state your name. Holly Brewer. Okay, do you have a comment, Holly? Or... I do, I live off Finch and we have a lot of new neighbors with the new development. And I, I have two things very quickly. Um, uh, they're going to have children that are gonna to want to travel and, and around the island, perhaps go through the trails. And, uh, and there'll also be children that will want to go to the high school going south to north. And I just wonder what the story will be there because Finch Road is very challenging. Um, and because uh, there's, the, there's the Wyatt to Finch uh, Traverse, which is challenging. And then there's also heading up to Sportsman and there's heavy vehicles going up Finch. So I just wonder what the story is there. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for your comment. I can't respond now because we are about to- uh... That's fine. Okay, thank you. Um... So I think everyone who had their hand up, as far as I know, has had a chance to give a comment and I invite anybody to contact me um, independently uh, or send me your comments in writing. And I'll just uh, let you know if we can get any of your comments that you have by the end of the month, that'd be appreciated. And here's the sort of the general plan is we'll, we'll submit uh, for council to see if they wanna move forward with uh, any trails through Lost Valley in the first quarter of next year. If they decide to move ahead with it, then we'll start design um, next spring and go through permitting uh, through the summer and into the fall. And who knows when we'll construct it at this point, but uh, hopefully it'll be shortly after that. So we're right at six o'clock. I wanna thank uh, all our presenters and every, all of you for attending and providing your comments. And we will um, give you more information as soon as we have it. So thanks everybody. Have a great night and talk to you later. Bye-bye.